All right. Um, in this example, this is question number five. What they're basically asking you guys to do is do f of g of x. And then what they'd like you to do is not only to divide this, but then they'd like you to um, identify the domain. So on a problem like this, if you guys remember, the main important thing that I want you guys to come away with from last class period was obviously, yes, we're going to be doing you know, algebraic you know, operations and simplifying. But the main important thing was really understanding this notation. F of g of x, or f divided, by, f divided by g of x just means f of x divided by g of x. So all I'm simply going to do is take my f of x function, do 4x minus 1, all over my g of x function. And that's it. OK? Now, the next thing is we want to be able to simplify. I did an example in class where we looked into simplifying by factoring. right? Well, so we look at this. We can't factor our denominator. We really can't factor our numerator. Nor can we really simplify this by dividing because we haven't, we haven't, learned, we haven't gone over any problems where dividing when the denominator um, is larger than the uh, are larger than the degree in the numerator. So we haven't discussed that yet. So there's really nothing else we can do. Yes? 4x squared? OK. Oh, OK. All right, well, still, basically everything will still be the same, right? I mean, we still cannot um, factor anything, Richard, or do anything else. However, they are asking us to find the domain. So if you guys remember, the next thing that we wrote down for the domain was the restrictions. And the one thing on the restriction was, so therefore, this is simplified. You can't do anything with this. OK? Always look to factor. Always look to do things to simplify it. But we can't simplify this any further, Chris. However, the domain, there is a restriction on the domain. And what I told you guys, what I told you was that whenever you have a variable in the denominator, you cannot have your de that variable cannot make your denominator equal to zero. So all you simply need to do to find to help you with the domain is you need to figure out the values that make your denominator equal to zero. So yep, all you need to do is set your denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Those are going to be the values that are going to make your denominator equal to zero. So when I go ahead and subtract. Why do I keep on doing cubed? <laughs> so shh, I don't, I'm not sure why there's such a big issue. Somebody's leaving. That's OK. Um, so if you guys go ahead and take a look at this. When we go and solve, we have to take the square root of an odd no or of a negative number, right? Well, you can't take the square root of, an, of a negative number under the real number system, but we can do it under the imaginary system, right? So anyways, let's go back to thinking about this. The, the domain is the set of all x values, right? That make, that make your equation or make your equation true. That's a part of your equation. So what we're looking for is what values make my denominator 0? Is there any real numbers that make my denominator 0? No, there's only this imaginary number. Well, guess what? Imaginary numbers are not actually a part of our real graph, correct? So therefore, the domain is simply going to be all real numbers. Even though we look to find the restrictions, there's no restrictions under the real number system. There would only be restrictions under the imaginary number system. So the domain would be all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Mm -hmm. 